Hey guys, it's Ron. So I apologize for taking so long to upload another video. Uh, been a lot, been uh, really busy, but uh, here goes. So this is Lab 8. Lab 8 uh, is static routes, and as you can see, the network has changed a little bit. All right, I've upgraded the network just slightly. I've added a, a backup route, uh, that little 256k link between router A and router C. I've also re-IP'd a couple of the links. My 192.168.0 networks are for my point-to-point -point links. My 192.168.1 uh, addresses are for my loopback addresses, which are also new. Uh, and my 172.16s are now uh, just for hosts. All right. So we'll talk a little bit about static routes. Static routes are a way uh, for the administrator to specifically tell a router how to get to a network. All right. So this is there's no routing protocols involved. This is you telling the router how to get to a network. So in a small network with you know not that many uh, you know connections, it works pretty good. You know as long as the network doesn't change because uh, static routes don't change. Every time there's a change, you would have to go in there and manually change it, which uh, I don't advise. Uh, but you can use static routes. I advise uh, only using static routes very sparingly and allow uh, a dynamic routing protocol to be your workhorse. But since this lab is static routes, that's what we'll talk about. So there are two methods for implementing static routes. One, you will, uh, in order to reach a certain destination, you're just going to tell your router which interface to go out of. Another method for doing it is in order to reach a network you're going to tell your router uh, what your next hop is so what address to send it to so let's say in this case we have router A router A is trying to reach this network uh, we're going to tell one method is going to have router A just say go out serial zero one All right. another method uh, instead is going to say uh, go to IP address 192.168.0.1 so one is which interface do I exit? The other one is who am I sending it to? All right. Now we'll also address something called an administrative distance. An administrative distance is like the believability of a route. So the lower the number, the more believable it is. A connected route uh, has a believability or an AD of like one. All right. So it's ultra believable. Whereas uh, some of the uh, routing protocols that are, are kind of old and antiquated might have a uh, an administrative distance of uh, 110, 120, you know, dependent upon which protocol you're using. All right, so you can assign a static route a certain administrative distance as well, uh, and, and that comes in handy because you can add the route in there. But if if ever it gets advertised out dynamically and that has a, a lower administrative distance it'll overwrite your static route alright so uh, I've done that you know mostly for the lab environment I haven't done that uh, in practice like in a real network I typically uh, like I said use static routes very very sparingly because you can cause problems that way if you're not uh, smart about how you're using them uh, and I just let uh, the routing protocol be the workhorse so let's get into it uh, I have to basically take each of these networks and then I'm going to convert them into just their network number. All right. So, for instance, this uh, this network is 192.168.0.9 with a slash 30. So if I convert this out, I know that my actual network address is 192.168.0.8. And if you don't know how to do that, watch my subnetting video. Uh, it explains that. And if if I don't explain it good enough for you, shoot me an email, and you know we'll, we'll figure it out together. All right, so I basically go through and I'm going to convert every one of these to their network address. All right, so then I made this chart. Let's say from the perspective of router B, in order to reach this network you, with this mask, here's my two methods. I either go out this interface or I go to this next hop. All right, so that's my two different methods. But I have to first convert each one of these networks uh, to its network address. If you don't do that and you put in an address that
it's not a network address with this uh, with this mask, the router's going to complain. It's going to say inconsistent uh, address or, or mask, some something along that line, but it's not going to take it. So you need to know how to convert to the network address. Enough said. So here's the first method. This is IP route, and this is where I want to go. So I want to go to this network, use it, uh, and that network has this mask. So this identifies that entire network. And in this method, I'm going to go out this serial interface. Now this 150 at the end is that administrative distance that I talked to. So I'm, what I'm trying to do is assign it an administrative distance of 150. But with this method, it kind of ignores that entry at the end, and I'll show you. So if we jump uh, to router A, all right, I've already copied a couple of these out. So let me just copy, come back here, I'll do a config T, do show IP route. So this is what's currently in my routing table, just the three connected networks. So this is my serial 01, my serial 00, uh, and my loopback address. So, uh, so it looks like I forgot to copy or I forgot to configure my fast Ethernet interface. Not a big deal. I don't have anything connected to that right this second. But so you see that it's, it's it only knows about the routes that are directly connected to it. So if I do paste this in IP route, and I'm using the uh, actual outgoing interface here, hit enter, do a do show IP route again. Notice I have this static entry now. I have an S. The problem is, though, whenever you use that outgoing interface, it comes up directly connected. And I don't like that. You know, I like to see what the administrative distance is. That way I know the believability of the route. All right. And in this case, it shows directly connected, which it's not. This, this is something that's on another router. So I don't typically like to... Uh, to roll with that one so let's go ahead and take it out copy paste do let's arrow up do show IP route so now we just have our connected routes so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna copy in all of the routes that I want to add to it alright so notice now I'm doing an IP route the network number the mask that it's using that next hop and then the administrative distance now the administrative distance here is optional you don't have to add that I like to add it for the lab environment because I know that when I go to put in a a dynamic routing protocol it's gonna override it uh, and I'm just gonna leave those static routes in there alright in a real environment I wouldn't leave these in there but do show IP route alright so notice now I have a couple of static entries and now they have this 150 by them. So now I know what the administrative distance is and I know who it's going to send it to. And for, for me personally, I just like to see that, okay? Uh, you might not. I do. So that that's how I roll in my network. Alright, so now if I do uh, do show IP route uh, and I'm going to pick the uh, loopback address 192.168.1.3 of router C. So now it says it's known via static, and this is the next hop. All right. Exit. If I go to router C, oops, six x. May actually go to router B as well. Enable, I'm going to do a uh, debug IP ICMP. All right. I'm going to come over here, enable debug IP ICMP. All right, wonderful. So now if I try to ping that, ping 192.168.1.3. All right, so I'm getting used back. So something's wrong here. So if I come over to my next hop, which is router B so it received those but the problem was is it it doesn't know how to get there yet because we do a do show IP route of 192.168.1.3 uh, 
oops I'm in enable mode so I don't need to I don't need to use a do control a goes back do backspace subnet not in table so just because I told router uh, a how to get there and if I look at my drawing so I told router a how to get to this loopback address so it sent it out this interface well router B doesn't know how to get there yet so I'm gonna have to tell router B how to get there and then I'm gonna also have to tell router C how to get back to router A so pings are two are uh, twofold and I have to know how to get there and they have to know how to send it back to me alright so as you can see the static routes uh, I have to add you know three three different routes in, in this case, if I want to go over that top 2 meg link, I have to add three routes to get there. One, tell the router A where to send it. Tell router B where to pass it on to. And tell router C how to get back to router A. So it, it, it can get pretty deep if you, you know, have a large network. So let's, let's just uh, paste these all in. So I'm down to router B. I'm going to copy. Uh, enable... Or, Correction config T paste. All right, so now router B should know how to get there. Now I just need router C. Let me copy these. Copy paste. Oops. If I were only in config T, that would probably work. So now, let's go back to router A, we'll try it again, and bam, it works. So there you have it. That's, that's static routing. Uh, you have to add a lot of entries for it. Uh, you can add administrative distances. You can either uh, tell it uh, which interface to go out or what the next hop is. I prefer the next hop. Uh, and, you know, again, this is, this is going to be for a static network. Uh, in, in my case, uh, I have this link down here that's not even being used because I've basically told it to get to here, send it out this interface because this is my primary link. Well, what happens if this link goes down? Well, it's not going to default back and say, well, go down this link. Now, I could add another static route using this side and... Uh, and use a different administrative distance but again if this link goes down it's still going to continue to send it here so it's not even going to know there's a problem now if this link goes down it should realize that that interface is down it'll use its other link and hopefully things will work out but uh, I wouldn't trust that again static routes are for networks that don't change there's never a problem you know blah 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 if you want it to have some flexibility to where this link goes down or this link goes down, it uses this backup link, you need to use a dynamic routing protocol. But uh, but that's it, man. Just the IP route, the network, the mask, uh, and either the outgoing interface or that next hop. You need to be able to convert each of these to its network address. And again, if you don't know how to do that, go ahead and watch my subnetting video. Uh, and uh, that's it. So I hope you learned something. Hope you got something out of it. Uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to shoot me an email or leave a comment, and I will do my best to answer. All right, guys. Take it easy.